Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And a couple of very interesting things have just happened in the Ripple v SEC lawsuit. So I'll tell you guys about everything that happened. If you guys are XRP holders though, make sure you press that like button and let's dive right into it. First of all, the judge made a very interesting conclusion earlier today. The court ordered the SEC to provide to the court by June 16th 10 additional documents for in-camera review to assist the court with its decision regarding the SEC's claims of attorney-client privilege in connection with the Hinman speech. I can already few people asking me what exactly does this mean, so let's build it up piece by piece. The Hinman speech was, again, Hinman was a director of corporation finance at the SEC, and he gave a speech regarding crypto regulation somewhere in 2018. The attorney-client privilege is one of the reasons why the SEC claims that every email that went around this speech should be hidden, because they basically say Hinman asked some SEC lawyers uh, or attorneys for advice, or basically he asked them for what exactly should I write in there, what exactly should we do. He was the client in that sense. And for that reason, Ripple, in this court case, cannot see those emails. This is also what the previous call was about, if you guys remember. A week, is, a week ago or so, there was a um, court hearing, basically, that we all attended. It was really fun. And that was also regarding this issue. It goes a couple layers deeper though, partially because they at first claimed that it was actually, um, basically it should be held within the SEC, it should not be given a ripple because of the deliberative process privilege. And now they're claiming AC or attorney client privilege in the midst, in the meantime, they also went for a motion for reconsideration. They also basically gave the judge even more documents to review and whatnot. So there's a lot that went before this final conclusion. This part, if you don't understand, they basically, the SC has a lot of documents, right, that went into this whole process of, of the, let's say the emails, there's a lot of them, there's a lot of documents in that sense. The judge is not going to read every single one of them. She basically goes over a little sample of it and kind of concludes from there. Hmm, yes or no is what you're saying most likely right or most likely wrong. And if there's doubt, she'll ask for more as we've seen now, specifically because of the earlier court hearing, I believe. But let's quickly read this. The court previously permitted the SEC to submit 10 exemplar documents for in-camera review in connection with its motion for partial reconsideration of the court's January 13th order. If you guys don't remember, it was a while back, so I understand. On the basis of attorney-client privilege, however, this is the new uh, claim. Before they claimed DPP and wanted to reconsider, now they're saying it again, but based on a different privilege. The SEC seeks to withhold these and other documents described in Attachment 1 to the SEC's February 17th motion for partial reconsideration. The court has reviewed the 10 exemplar documents previously in the context of the deliberative process privilege, but has not reviewed any documents listed in attachment one. To facilitate the court's review of the communications to which SEC claims the attorney-client privilege applies, by June 16th, which I think is today, no? Um, oh, tomorrow. Okay, by tomorrow, the SEC may submit 10 additional documents listed in attachment one for in-camera review. This is basically so the judge can decide whether or not this attorney-client privilege actually should apply. If you guys don't remember, during the hearing, she was very skeptical as to why they changed from DPP to attorney-client privilege. It kind of changed from it being a, um opinion to actual legal guidance. That's, again, talking about the speech and what the purpose of that speech was. And she didn't really buy the fact that he is a client of an attorney because they basically said the SEC as a, as, a, as an agency, whenever they let go of some statements, they can be the client of the SEC attorneys sort of internally. But whenever um, Hinman is asking for legal guidance or so, he should contact his own attorneys, not SEC attorneys, if you guys get my drift. James also shared for your information, below his attachment one to the SEC's February 17 motion of partial consideration referenced in the order, but I don't think we need that. Then again, there's a really interesting claim from Crypto Wolf with how bad the lawsuit conference w call went a little while ago for the SEC. I'm surprised it's taken the court this long to decide. And again, guys, if you don't understand, the reason, the most likely the reason as to why this is all taking so long is because the judge wants to make sure everything is ruled out. We saw earlier there was a statement by Ripple um, or a, a statement by the judge made and the SEC wanted to appeal that or basically reconsider. Right now, she most likely wants to do things really thoroughly, so there's no more chance that the SEC eventually can try to turn this verdict around. That is most likely yet again because there's such public attention to it all. And we see that, again, from my very limited amount of research, let me add, uh, but I've <laughs> I've actually only been involved with cases that have very big public opinion or very very a lot of eyes on it, basically. But what I've heard from a lot of attorneys and what I've seen myself is that they pay more attention to doing things 
thoroughly in a sense of undebatable by um, like a little bit extra steps than you might think were necessary just to make sure it couldn't be appealed later. That is not to say that judges normally are thorough. I'm more so meaning meticulous, where a normal person would think it's, you know, good enough by any reasonable doubt, but they want to actually cover every single possible basis to a, a layer which nobody thinks would be necessary, but they just want to do it for the sake of uh, not being able to argument it afterwards, if you guys get my drift. But I guess that's what a judge is there for, right? Which is why it's not a strange thing. Now, there's actually another update which came out throughout the day as well. The SEC filed its request to seal, again, whenever I'm reading that, it's basically to hide stuff, its response to the amnesty motion, uh, amnesty being friends of the court, meaning all the people who signed up through John Deaton and John Deaton himself, basically friends of the court, to participate in the Daubert Challenge. This is basically um, the amnesty motion to participate in the Daubert Challenge. That part is basically John Deaton with all the XP holders cl coming in and saying to the judge, hey, uh, there was one expert the SEC had that claims to know exactly why XP holders invest into XRP. We want to kind of aid the court here to explain why XP holders actually bought XRP. And of course, there was a dispute about that because the SEC doesn't think that's necessary. Um, but the SEC also wanted to hide a lot of the information regarding this expert. And Ripple said, well, I don't think that's necessary. And I believe the judge actually concluded, I'm not a thousand percent sure on that just quite yet, but I think so, that uh, a lot of the information can be open, except for some of the most private parts, which I think is quite logical as well. The SEC claims that while some information by the SEC seeks to seal has already been publicized by Movens Counsel, uh, John Deaton, the SEC seeks to seal his and other material to prevent further threats to and harassment of the SEC's experts. So it could be that there's actually not a conclusion made just quite yet, um, because as far as I understand it now, the SEC filed its request to seal its response to the MC motion. Hmm. It's kind of hard to deduce exactly which part of this they're trying to hide, uh, because it kind of feels as if they're trying to hide the response. Um... Maybe that also includes some private information or so. But the issue at hand is what I just described to you guys, right? There was a witness who said he knew why XP holders invested. Uh, John Deaton came in and said, well, let me add to the court real quick why XP holders are investing because it represents 67,000 XP holders. Let me help you out. And then the SEC was too afraid to get all the information regarding the uh, expert public, whatever he said, whatever he was thinking. Ripple said, well, you know, hide the most private information, like, you know, who he is, his name, may, uh, not his name, but you guys get my drift, like where he lives or that type of stuff, redact all that, because nobody needs to know all of it, we don't want him to be harassed, but a lot of this stuff should be for the public eyes. SEC said, no, 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 and I believe the judge said, I'll agree with Ripple, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. The SEC seeks to seal this and other material to prevent further threats to and harassment of the SEC's expert. The SEC further states that expert witnesses understand that their opinions may be challenged by the opposing party and may even expect uh, pu public challenges to their opinions in high-profile cases. But no expert witness should expect to be subjected to a campaign of humiliation, harassment, or threats simply by agreeing to act as an expert witness. And I would usually agree with, um, with what they're saying. I mean, if this expert comes on in and is a really controversial opinion, but it's his expertise, so to speak, I would agree with them that it, it doesn't warrant all this harassment and whatnot. However, if you're stating something this controversial, which is just a um, full out, let me say it, miscategorization or mistake or lie, something in that ballpark, you can't, as an expert of any sort, claim to know how or why XP holders are investing into something if you're, first of all, not one, I'm not sure if he is or isn't, but certainly if you're not, you know, that big a part of this community, so to speak, specifically if your your battle is against this ridiculously many people who have exact reasons as to why they bought, it, it's, a, it's a little, it's a hard one, right? And I guess for this witness now, it's a hard pill to swallow that he messed with the wrong army, so to speak, of getting a really improper conclusion out there, which is just too controversial for people to let slide. Um, then again, should a lot of this stuff be hidden, I'm thinking always make sure that he can't be harassed too much. Don't put his house address and whatnot. However, again, this is not my battle to face. This is not something we can go too deep in. It's just SEC wants to hide more stuff from the public because of harassment and whatnot. And Ripple does agree mostly to the sense that, you know, some of the most private things should be hidden. Except for the fact that, you know, the campaign of humiliation, blah, blah, blah. He made a really contradictory statement, which nobody agrees with, and I think it deserves some criticism. If people want to opt in and explain their side of the story, if they want to call him an idiot for saying something this ridiculous, it's kind of like similar to calling Amber Heard's lawyers kind of stupid or looking stupid or Amber Heard in the same sense as well. You know, they went for this position, they said something this controversial, except the consequences. Humiliation is literally part of, of the whole thing, right? He said something, and if he stands by it, then how can he be humiliated? 
if you guys get my drift? I mean, if he, this is his expert opinion, he was questioned as an expert and he gives his expertise and now he's being humiliated. How then? How is that the case? If he was, you know, still standing by his own opinion right now, how can he be humiliated for his opinion if you guys get my drift? He should still be proud, even though people are contradictory, he should be proud of whatever he said and still stand by it, I would say, or he wasn't so certain. I'm just kind of wondering, the harassment part, again, I understand the threats, I understand, but the humiliation part, I'm not sure how he can be humiliated, except for if they found some pictures of him or whatever, but I think the humiliation only stands if some of the arguments which he gave can be disproven, and he believes that too, that they can be disproven. I mean, now I wanted to go into some examples of why a, a genius at some points might not be humiliated just by people having criticism, only if they can kind of literally counter whatever the uh, genius said, so to speak. But yeah, you guys understand the situation. So that's it for right now. If you've not done it yet, make sure you check out the link below for the Bybit $8 million competition. It's starting rather soon, so I recommend you guys to be part of it right now. It's actually a team-based competition, which means if we win as a team, everybody is winning some money. So make sure you join it. Link is down below, and it's going to be crazy. There's also a ton of giveaways, a ton of money that you can win for just entering, which is why I recommend you guys to go ahead and check it out.